Hi Vinyl community and welcome to my channel. I'm Bruce and I'm based in the UK, in London to be specific. Uh, this is my first post on the Vinyl community uh, and I'd like to say a few thank yous before I begin. Uh, this has been done in response to the Vinyl tag by Rob Walker uh, and through him, uh, through uh, Melinda Murphy in America, I'd actually follow the thread through to, to Rob's posting. So uh, shout out to them. Most of all to Dylan at Noble Records in uh, North Carolina, who's always got a fascinating cachet of records a lot of collectible stuff that Dylan has uh, so I'm always interested to see his channel but there's many many more that I can't uh, mention here but uh, anyway let's get started so the first one is my favorite album purchased in 2021 this one is uh, it's an original copy of traffic this is their second album uh, slightly confusingly but it's called just traffic um, and this is on the original, let me just get it out of the sleeve so I can show you. Uh, this is on the original Pink Island label, uh, which is now quite, I don't know whether you can see that, that's quite clear to you. Uh, it's now quite collectible. The interesting thing about this disc was I purchased it from somebody in Germany uh, who said that there was a tear on the cover and when I got it uh, I was quite surprised to see that in fact the tear I don't know whether you can see there but the tear is in fact tiny little teeth marks by a, a mouse or something so it's obviously been left in someone's attic for a number of years and then been attacked but anyway the vinyl's fine, just a shame about the sleeve. Next one, number two, was uh, an album uh, by the first band you saw live. This is The Stranglers, uh, who I saw in 1980 at the Finsbury Park Rainbow in North London. Uh, I can't remember a lot about the gig, but I do know that their singer and guitar player was actually doing time in prison when the gig was held so they had lots of guest artists covering for him but anyway so that's my uh, number two number three is album by a duo this is a very recent purchase i got this just the other day this is the nancy and lee album from i think it's about 1968 it's on the uh i hope you can see that the reprise steamboat label uh, yeah it's quite a nice duet I haven't l listened to it more than a couple of times but I will do uh, number four is an album still in the shrink this one has a story behind it as well this album here is by Ronnie Foster who's a jazz organ player and it's on the uh, yeah, this one is on the Blue Note, the original press uh, label. And the album comes in a shrink, which is quite interesting because the name of the artist, Ronnie Foster, I hope you can see that there, is actually uh, printed onto the cellophane on the sleeve. So I normally take shrink wraps off but in this case I think I'll leave that one on because uh, as I say that that name Ronnie Foster is actually on the shrink itself okay number five is uh, a little bit predictable nothing too exciting but it's a concept album and I've chosen here Genesis The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway which is a double um, on the this is on the old Charisma label, the uh, Mad Hatter on it. Now coming up is a an album that I'm number six, an album I'm yet to play. 
I've had this for a couple of years and I really don't know why I haven't played it. It's Canned Heat, Boogie with Canned Heat. I think it's their second album from 68. Uh, again, this is on the original Liberty Blue label. Uh, it's the British pressing, that one. Uh, but I just haven't had time to get round to listening to it. Uh, I must do so this year. Perhaps it's one of my New Year resolutions for 2022. The next coming up is an artist that you've discovered in, uh, or I have discovered in 2021. I'd heard of Curtis Amy before. He's a, or was a jazz saxophonist. Um... LA based and I think he did a lot of work session work he even plays on the doors um, touch me uh, he does the the sax break in that one but uh, he's here he's teamed up with Dupree Bolton who's an excellent trumpet player and this album Katanga I think was out of press for a long time uh, and the Blue Note Tone Poet series uh, sorry not Blue Note it's Pacific Jazz uh, tone poet series you can see the label there reissued it for the first time last year so uh, I was quite intrigued by it I think I saw it on their website a few other people I think Norman Maslow showed it as well in the vinyl community so I, I thought I'd try it out but um, yeah it's a very good recommendation so thanks for that now in at number eight is a live album Again, this is an album I've rarely played. I may have played it once or twice. It's by Jake Thackeray, who was uh, a very sort of English, I think he was a Yorkshireman, uh, slightly uh, quaint uh, singer-songwriter. And uh, yeah, that one's, I think it's live at the Queen Elizabeth Hall in London. It's about 1970, so it's quite an old album. Anyway, I must give an, another spin to that. Now, perhaps the most obscure record I'm going to choose today is the album number nine from a different continent. And I, I went for Brazil and this very strange record called Candomblé. And it is a, uh, it's a very interesting record. I got it some years ago. It includes a book inside. Uh, and I think Candomblé is something to do with voodoo. There's all these, there's all these pictures inside this amazing gatefold. Uh, of a, it looks like an animal, some sort of sacrifice uh, and ceremony where they're dancing. You can see there. I mean, this poor chicken. I think it, he's met a, a pretty grisly end. And there's photos inside as well. And it's on a very obscure, let me see, I can't even remember how I accessed this. Oh yeah, this one's from the middle of the gatefold. It's on this, I can't even pronounce this label, uh, Editora Shawal, Shawa. It's a Brazilian um, field recording. I think it's early 60s. And uh, there's, there's no music as such, it's just chanting and the sounds of, of one of these ceremonies that they're performing um, on, on the disc. There's lots of bits falling out now. Anyway, so that's, that's my number nine uh, from Brazil, Candomblé. Number 10 is an album with the price sticker still on it. Well, this one says Virgin. I can't read much more on it, but this is uh, this is the Buzzcocks, Time's Up. I think these are were originally sessions. They were once released, I had years ago, a version of it on bootleg. Uh, this is when Howard DeVoto was still with the band. So it's, it's 1977, before Buzzcocks had really, uh, were a major signing or anything like that. They hadn't yet uh, signed to United Artists Records. But uh, that's when how DeVoto was still with the band. And uh, there's some good stuff on there. Uh, staying with the same sort of um, time, 
a new wave album which I've chosen at number 11 is the only ones who I am yet to see anyone talk about on the vinyl community uh, maybe they have but I haven't heard them do so uh, yeah they, they were a great London band didn't do many albums had uh, very little success they were on a major label you can see there they were on CBS uh, this is an original press um, and they made about three albums uh, and then faded away I think the the record label shafted them as is often the case and um, they I know they reformed about ten years ago but I uh, haven't heard anything from them since anyway I think their drummer died a few years ago so maybe that put the kibosh on that one um, at number 12, I've got uh, a box set, and I'm choosing Nick Drake here. This is his, uh, an American version of uh, the, uh, not Ryko Disc, what were they called? Hannibal Records. Uh, and this was issued, I think, in the mid-80s, uh, when Nick Drake was still relatively unknown. Uh, he hadn't yet uh, broken through posthumously as a collectible cult folk singer-songwriter. But what you get in here is you get, sorry, you get the discs, but there's also the booklet there giving you a, a, a brief biography of his uh, quite short life and, and slightly tragic end. Anyway, so that, and there are four albums in there, three albums that were released in his lifetime and a series of uh, sessions and uh, uh, you know other bits left over um, on the fourth album. Now at number thirteen uh, was uh, an album with a sporting theme. Well, I don't know if the album itself has a sporting theme or even a sporting title, but I've chose Woody Herman's Thundering Herd because it's got this um, American football. Uh, theme on the cover you also get it on the on the back cover there I don't know if you can see but they're all sort of huddling around him and this is on the British uh, impression of the fantasy label and I think that's an early 70s album yeah 1974 that one came out so towards the end of his quite long career number 14 was a jazz album and I've chosen Jim Hall concerto uh, I've got to thank Dan the jazz messenger for this one because uh, I've recently started watching his channel and it was one of the albums which he chose I think he did a posting on um, an albums with various themes and he chose a good one to start the day with uh you know to greet the dawn <laughs> and yeah it's, it's it's a really nice album uh it's got i think it's got stan getz on it and uh chet baker as well playing trumpet so a really good lineup uh really fine album on on cti that's uh i think this is a british pressing you can see there it's the uh, CTI label, Creed Taylor's label uh, from the 1970s. There we are. So that's my number 13, an album with a sporting theme. And at number 14, uh, sorry, Sorry, that's my jazz album, number 14. What am I saying? Go to number 15 now. This is a best of album. Um, and here I've chosen Tom Rush, classic Rush, which I've had for a number of years. This is a kind of introduction to his... I think this is... Oh, this is an American pressing. Okay. Again, I haven't played this for a number of years. He's famous for doing No Regrets, which uh, Scott Walker covered, I think, in the mid-70s. Uh, OK. 
Let's Go to Number 16 was an album with at least eight people on the jacket. I've kind of cheated here because I think there are seven people, but they're multiplied by two because it's a really eerie, really eerie album cover. Blood, Sweat and Tears' first album, their debut, Child is Father to the Man. Um, that's on... That's on... This is the British Pressing original on CBS with The Walking Eye. Um, yeah, it's a pre pretty eerie album sleeve. Uh, I think what you've got here is each member of the band is, is replicated as a child sitting on their knees, which is really, really strange, that one. But it's a great album. OK. Let's go on to number 17, a soundtrack, and I've chosen uh, the late, great Ennio Morricone's Duck You Sucker, which I think was released. This is the American version of the album. This was released in UK under the title of uh, Fistful of Dynamite, I think. This is the US version. There you are. It's on the United Artists label. Um, And yeah, uh, he's one of a favourite of mine. I've got quite a few of his. He did a lot of spaghetti western soundtracks. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic uh, pressing, a really good album. Let's go to number eighteen, which I'll have to bypass. Which was uh, something from the vinyl community. As I'm new on the vinyl community. Sorry, Rob, um, I'm yet to receive anything, but uh, all donations will be gratefully received. Uh, so let's get on to number 19. It was an album with no writing on the cover. Uh, and I've chosen the very strange Henry Cow. This, is, I think, is their debut album released on... This is on Virgin. Uh, yeah, it's on Virgin Records. Yeah, quite, quite a sort of avant-garde, jazzy. Um, I think there's sax on there, and uh, Fred Frith was with the band, so it's all very strange, sort of. Um, yeah, quite out there, sort of music. Again, I don't play it a lot, but it's an interesting one to have in the collection. I'm glad I've got it. Uh, at number twenty is a seven inch single. Uh, I don't really collect singles. Uh, I've got a few, I've got a little crate, you know, full of singles, but I don't consciously go out and, and look for singles. But this is one I picked up in a charity shop, thrift store, you'd call it in, in the States, uh, a few years ago, which I'd never heard. And it's actually fantastic. It's probably the best song I, I think I've heard by them. And it's Devo's Be Stiff, which is on, uh, Yes, you guessed it. It's on Stiff Records. Uh, yeah, it's a great single. Really nice guitar riff on there. We're nearly at the end now. Let's go on to number 21. It was an album on coloured vinyl. I don't have many records on coloured vinyl. I've got a few recent ones. But um, an interesting album from the New Wave Punk era, which was released on... Uh, coloured vinyl, which I got a few uh, about a couple of years ago, was I picked up a, a very nice copy of um, of Ian Jury's uh, New Boots and Panties. There we are. And as it says on the uh, promo sticker, there it's on gold vinyl, which I'll show you. Uh, there it is. So that's number 21. And lastly, I don't have a large collection of 80s music at all. And an album which doesn't get a lot of love from me uh, these days. Uh, I've probably played it twice. I've had it for years. It's one of those albums I sometimes forget I've even got it. Is uh, John Martin, Well Kept Secret. And this is indeed from 1982. Um... Yeah, I can't remember much about it. I think that Ronnie Scott plays sax on one number. Um, but 
yeah, I, I don't really play that one very much. Anyway, thanks very much. I hope I haven't rambled on too long. Uh, and I hope you found some of these uh, records I've shown interesting. Uh, feel free to leave comments and I look forward to seeing you again on the vinyl community. Okay, thanks then. Bye.